So um, next up, we have um, Heidi Carruthers, who's our wild, our wild St Albans uh, project officer, who is joined by Nadia Bishara from the Community Initiative, which is Wilderhood Watch, and I'll leave them to tell you more. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'll do a little bit of speaking first for about four minutes or so, and then I'll hand you over to Nadia. So, my name is Heidi, and I am lucky enough to have been leading the Wilder St Albans project over the last 14 months. Now, Wilder St Albans is a partnership project between Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust and St Albans City and District Council, with one very clear aim, and that is to increase biodiversity across the district of St Albans through community-led action. Now, the project has two years of funding initially. £100,000 was put forward by the District Council, and we as a trust have also been able to add to the pot over the course of the projects so that we can do more um, over these two years. We've also received grants from Seeds of Change and Hearts Protection Board. Now, it's very much been a pilot uh, project for the Trust. We've been trialling basically a new way of working to support people to do more for wildlife where they are. And my role has predominantly been one of empowering and facilitating community action by supporting people in a way that's right for them, that fits their need. So what I'm going to do, um, oh sorry, at the essence of the project is a belief that there is really something that we can all do. We all have something to offer in order to make St Albans that wilder place. Um, and big or small, every act really does make a difference. So what I'd like to do now, I've only got a few minutes as I said, so I'm just going to fire some things at you, some of the sort of initiatives that we've been working on over the last 14 months and our ways of working, um, just to give you a taste of, of some of the things we've been getting up to. So we have set up a process for residents to nominate sites for low mo. So very soon after I started in the role, it was quite clear that there were lots of residents that wanted to put forward their ideas um, uh, for areas that were being regularly mown by the council that they believed um, could benefit from reduced mowing and we could create some new grassland habitat. And I put Wilderhood Watch's badge here. You'll hear from Nadia very shortly from Wilderhood Watch. But they were key to sort of championing, championing this at the very early stages of the project. So what we did is we set up an initiative called Wilder Spaces, um, working with the district council where people could put forward their nominations. And 120 individual sites were nominated across the district, which was brilliant. So these have now all been assessed by the District Council for suitability on patches that were nominated on their land, and also patches have been put forward to Hertfordshire Highways. And it's literally in the next couple of weeks that we'll have clear confirmation from both Highways and the District Council as to which sites have been approved. But there are a significant number going forward, which is brilliant. So we've also been monitoring some trial wilding sites. So 18 months ago, the District Council had already allocated 38 new plots for wilding. And these were areas, again, that were being regularly mown. Um, but were then um, the changed the management schedules that they, they were just being mown once a year um, to try and increase grassland habitat. And we've been working in partnership with the Hearts and Middlesex branch of Butterfly Conservation and also the Ver Valley, Valley Society and their volunteers to actually start collecting some ecological information on these patches. Why we're doing that is because it's good to demonstrate what's going on. It's good to demonstrate the successes, how things change over time, but also to inform management because if there are some patches that perhaps aren't particularly diverse, well, there's certain things as managers that we can do to speed along that process. So we've also been monitoring progress and celebrating successes. So uh, we have set up an interactive Wilder Actions map that sits within the Wilder St Albans web pages where anyone can go on, you click onto one of these little icons and up pops a bubble which tells you about what's happening in that space. And anybody can go onto the map and add actions that they're taking, whether you're an individual or business or school. And if you do that, you'll get the option to be sent a lovely Wilder St Albans plaque uh, which you can proudly display to tell everyone that you're helping to create a wilder St Albans. 
So we've also set up a wilder schools network. So this gives schools the opportunity, teachers and governors, to come together, share ideas and best practice with respect to improving grounds for wildlife, but also for outdoor learning. Now, this network's been established for about six months now. We've met three times. We actually had a lovely meeting last evening as well. And it's really wonderful to see the benefit to teachers and teaching staff of just going around to different schools. We meet at a different school for each meeting and seeing what everyone's getting up to and, and sharing some ideas and inspiration. So we have also been coordinating three community working groups. And each of these groups are themed around our broad habitat types. So we have a waters group, we have a trees group, and we have a meadows group. And these groups are open to anyone to be part of. We've been coming together over the last six months, and as a group, we've been working to agree what we believe are priority actions with respect to that broad habitat type and increasing biodiversity. And all of the work that's been done so far has now been culminated in a Wilder St Albans plan. We've got a 27-point action plan of things that we want to work towards for the duration of the project, but then also beyond as well. But it's also been my role to support absolutely anyone in the community who has a wilder idea. So I'm there for any landowner who wants to do more on their patch. So it's been quite a lot of different stuff that I'm been, I have been getting involved with, it just to offer some sort of verbal advice or a bit more sort of logistical advice or, or support with things like tooling. So here I've just got some pictures to show you. This is from uh, Smallford Station in St Albans, part of Smallford Station's regeneration project. Um, we worked with some students from Oaklands College who are studying horticulture to uh, make the entrance to the station better for people and wildlife. So this area of scrub that isn't particularly diverse, we carried out a survey first, has been cleared. The students prepared the soil and that's been sown with a mixture of um, perennial wildflowers that are um, complementary of the local ecology along the Auburn Way. Some more examples here of some awesome stuff going on. So on the right-hand side, this is a school in... Uh, sorry, on the left-hand side, this is a school in Harfenden, who it's more meadow mania. These guys have been creating a wildflower meadow in their school grounds, about 150 square metres of wildflower meadow. Um, but this is also going to be their mindfulness meadow, so a space where students can always come and sit, have a moment of calm, and be distracted by nature, which I think is a lovely idea. And then the other picture there, this is from a local church who has the smallest of spaces outside the front of their church, but they wanted to create an eco-garden with some interpretation, just giving people, passers-by, some inspirational ideas of things that they can do on their own patches as well. And then this leads me on, hopefully that's okay for timing. Yes. This leads me on now to introduce you to uh, Nadia Bashara, who has set up a truly inspirational grassroots community group in St Albans. Um, so Nadia has been working with her group over the last couple of years to really improve St Albans, both for people and wildlife, and she's going to tell you all about it now. So thanks so much for coming, Nadia. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. <laughs> I think I wasn't supposed to do that. I just pushed a button, I think. <laughs> oh, there we go, we're fine. Right, so I'm Nadia, I'm the coordinator of Wilderhood Watch in St Albans, a community group, and I'm just going to talk to you um, quite briefly um, about how Wilder St Albans has helped us um, do what we, you know, want to do. So. To begin with, um, just a really quick overview of how we started. So basically, I live on Lancaster Road. It's a really long road in St Albans. And um, right at the back of all our um, gardens, there's a railway cutting. And along that railway cutting, as you can see, there are some beautiful, mature oak trees. So what happened in October 2018 was Network Rail decided they want to come along and chop down all our trees. And that's when we all got together along the road and we said, absolutely not. Um, we protested against it. We got a meeting with Network Rail and um, basically at the end of the meeting they assured us, actually, after all, we're not going to chop down your trees. So it was a really, really big success for us and it made us realise oh my goodness, when you all come together you really do have quite a lot of power. So we used that. Basically we decided, okay, now we want to do more for wildlife on our streets. So 
Moving on to February 2021, and this is significant because this is when Heidi from Wilder St Albans came on board. So at this point, we had six projects running. Um, what they pretty much all have in common is the idea was that we would actually work with neighbours on our streets. So it's very much chatting to neighbours and linking our gardens. And we did that in a number of ways. For example, Hedgehog Street, obvious, um, getting people to make holes in their fences or better still, you know, take down their fences, put up hedges. Um, and then Pollinator Highway, um, which again was very much about looking at what people had in their gardens that were working really well for nature, um, that were drought resistant, um, native, and then swapping them. So basically we could end up with um, uh, a really good pollinator highway that kind of ran along our street, also supporting neighbours to um, let their grass grow a bit longer and plant meadows. So, as you can see, this is now. So, yeah, it's, yeah. This is this is basically the impact of Wilder St Albans on us. Um, we've doubled our projects, but it's not only that. What's what's happened is that the projects that we were already running have been enhanced. Um, also, um, we started off um, February 2021. We already had about 27 streets, which which isn't bad, but. Um, some some streets were engaging better than others, you know, whereas now I think we've got more like 32, we'll soon be getting 35, um, you know, that's kind of going to be happening fairly soon. But I'd say that our streets are more engaged. We've got more people joining, but also they're doing more. So here's just a few examples. Um, our wildlife gardening champions. Um, now, what's happened here is that um, Heidi got involved and said, well, you know, what would make things even better would be if we actually had some experts who could actually go into the gardens um, the wild, along Wildhood Watch streets and actually help people on the spot with what they could do to actually um, make their gardens better for wildlife. So that's what happened. Um, Heidi got the funding for 15 people to be trained um, as RHS wildlife gardeners. And now um, people along Wildhood Watch streets and also just streets really close by can actually contact me and say, look, I'd, I'd love a wildlife garden consulta consultation. Could you please send along two of your people to help me? So that's what we're doing. Um, another one, love this one. Toad Road. This was, this was the first new project um, when um, Wilder St Albans um, came along. Um, I love this one. Basically, well, you can tell by the name, basically just getting people to dig ponds. Um, so this was, the support we got for this was so good. For a start, I didn't know very much about ponds, so we had that expert advice right there. Also, we wanted to run events. So, for example, we were able to run an event at Grebe House, um, as you know, the um, Wildlife Trust um, headquarters in St Albans, and Heidi was there, you know, doing a family pond dipping session um, for people, again, along our roads. Our pond walks um, were made more successful because, again, Heidi was able to come to most of them, um, just a brief outline, all we did was ask neighbours along our streets to open their gardens if they had ponds and allow other neighbours to go and have a look so that they could basically talk about how they could make one of their own. Um, and then having Heidi there to basically answer questions as well as do pond dipping with the children um, was, was really brilliant. It basically inspired people. I have to say, um, it's been, it's, honestly, it's been probably our most successful, well, one of our most successful projects. We have so many people digging ponds now um, along our streets. It's, it's really amazing. Um, oh, yes, <laughs> bus stops. Okay, so, so Heidi's already pretty much um, talked about this. Um, but just to say that um, we had seven in February 2021. We now, we're now going to have hopefully a gazillion more. Um, and also just, again, Heidi did, um, she just briefly um, talked about surveying. Again, this was really important for us because um, finally we're able to get a little bit of data on our um, bus, bus stops just in terms of biodiversity. So then, you know, in the future, we'll just know how to manage them better. 
And then here we are, right, this is latest, latest project, um, our Swift Action project. Um, so this is something we were collaborating with, with the St Albans Bid, who very kindly gave us money to buy 30 Swift boxes, which was really exciting. Um, and then um, we had members of Wilderhood Watch giving money for PA systems and also um, a bit of money towards the ins installation costs. Well, this would have been very difficult to achieve without Wilder St Albans because basically I knew nothing about Swifts. I didn't know where to put the boxes. So basically Heidi and Tim Hill went round St Albans with me and pointed out exactly where they should go. And also, not only that, I had um, photographs with um, the Swift boxes actually drawn on by Heidi so that I knew I could go and I could say, this is where they need to be. Really, really important. Also, the PA systems, I didn't even know we needed them. So, um, you know, just, just really important from, from that perspective. So... That's me, so um, I just wanted to say thank you very, very much for inviting me here today, and especially big thank you to Heidi. Mm -hmm.